Hey guys, this is Brandon from Tap Rack Bank Trains. Here's why shot timers are important in your farm's journey. Number one, it gives you pressure. So whether you be drawing, reloading, doing red ups with the rifle, it gives you the pressure of performance. How fast do I need to go to guarantee I kill him? You can set time limits for yourself. We're gonna demo that momentarily right now. If you're dry firing, right, so let's start with dry fire. If you're dry fire, you can set time limits with either of these shot timers right here. Um, set yourself up with a second and a half of holster draw, and then as long as you're doing your holster draw within the second and a half, that's good to go. You can then translate that over to the field or whenever you are at the range, and then you can do your holster draw, set part times right, do the manipulations in between the beeps, or what you can do is just run the shot time regular, set a delay, do your holster draw, and there's that too. On top of pressure, right, of the manipulation itself, you're also getting a lot of practice in reaction time, right? He is the one. As the beep happens, your ability to react, whether it be draw, whether it be a ready up, or whatever drill you're gonna do, the reaction time is also a critical skill that not a lot of us talk about, but it's very important, right? A lot of people are gonna already gonna be delayed in their OODA loop, in their continuum, right, as they're dealing with a situation, the reaction time, right, is very important too. So you got pressure that will uh, allow you to kind of gauge how fast you're doing a lot of things, your manipulation, and then it's also increasing your um, reaction time. So the third one is data gathering, right? As you get all this data, whether from your part times, on your holster draws, reloads, ready ups, all that stuff, you can compile them and track your progress, right? Am I getting better? Am I getting worse, okay? As you know, all these things are perishable skills. This is actually a great way for you to track all those things. Now, you got data gathering, you got your reaction time, and then you got your pressure. How do you leverage these things in order for you to get better at shooting? A couple examples here. So, my initial experience with holster draw. I had my CCW class coming up. I was practicing holster draw on my own. I did not own a shot timer at this time. It was way back when, right? So I would holster draw, I would speed up and I feel good about myself, right? Come day of the, the class itself, I drew it about 1.8 seconds, right? In my mind, I was drawing as fast as I possibly could. But when it comes to game time, I was drawing at about 1.8, right? Maybe 1.75 seconds, which is, as we know, is, you know, it's trash. No good place, trash. The reason I perform like that is because there's such a thing as perceived speed and actual speed, right? So when you tell somebody what is one second, I promise you one second or perceive one second from each person is different from the next person, right? That's why when we do cadence drill, when people count 1001, 1002, even then they're saying at different speeds. And so they're going to be drawing at different speeds, right? If you don't have a standardized way to count time. so. If you're practicing, oh well, yeah, I'm, a, I'm good at whatever I'm doing. And then what ends up happening is on performance day, you were nowhere near what one second was at, right? So that's the first thing, breaking down what perceived speed is or learning or correcting your perceived speed into closer to what actual speed is at. So that's one part of getting better uh, with a shot timer. To avoid drawing like trash, what you can do is get yourself a shot timer. What my mistake was, is I was using what my perceived speed was, right? Which I was trying to get one second or one and a half and not necessarily getting a standardized measure from an actual speed from a shot timer. So no matter how fast I would be drawing that gun without an actual measured way to determine if I'm drawing it, then I'm not gonna get to my goal. The another problem that gets introduced in this is that since there's already a lot of things happening in your mind as you're doing the draw, what you're not gonna get is consistency too, right? That's part of that data gathering. If you're drawing as fast as you can and you're getting draws at one and a half all the way to two seconds, which by the way, perception wise, there's no way for you to know that. You know how fast you were going? But man, do you know how fast you were going? Unless you're doing this, then you're not gonna get consistent draws, which damages your training even more. So hence the importance of a shot timer. So let's talk about a couple of things first, right? That exist in this space, other than these physical timers right here. There are timers, right, or shot timers that are based out of apps, right? Whatever communist advice. Whatever communist advice. You're using whether it be Apple 
or Android, there are apps that you can download on those phones and to able for you to utilize those shot timers. The problem is the sensor, right? It could be not sensitive enough, it could be too sensitive, and to be honest with you, it's highly unreliable uh, when you're using uh, those app-based ones. On top of the apps, there are more traditional, quote unquote, uh, ways to do these things. One, they used to do stopwatches, right? Whether it be a physical stopwatch, or three-year watch right here, this analog watch, whatever, I guess you could do that too. And I guess there are also stopwatches in your phone. The problem is human reaction time and how detailed we need to be when it comes to these manipulations, right? So problem number one, you're stacking reaction times, right? Not only are you stacking your friend's reaction time when he presses the start button, your reaction time, and at the same time, um, at the end, he's also having to press that button to stop. For example, your friend presses the start button in a stopwatch and then says go, right? His reaction time from him pressing the button, from his, him saying go, on top of you hearing that, doing the whole drill, he hears the last shot goes off and then presses the stop button, you could be adding a total of about half a second to a whole second stacking all those stuff. When you're doing holster draws, these times on how to improve on holster draws are measured in the sub-seconds to 0.25 seconds and not in the ones and twos. So what ends up happening is you're not going to get an accurate reading or data to improve further. I see that it's wrong! I have here two of the more popular shot timers in our area. One is the Pack Club right, shot timer and you got that Shooter's Global shot timer right here, okay? Um, two very different shot timers. We'll talk about uh, pros and cons, right? Um, can you save money? Do you need certain features? We will see. We got your pack club timer up here. Super simple timer. It obviously measures the time uh, from beep all the way to the last shot. It also has the capability to have a delayed beep, right? So after you press the button, there's a delay um, and then the beep goes off. Very useful when you're by yourself. Now it's delayed, press the green button one more time. When I press the green button, it's gonna give us a few seconds of delay, and then boom, right? It also has a part time where you're able to set one beep at the beginning, another beep at the end. What you can do is press these two buttons one more time, right? Cycle through the modes. Currently right now it's asking if you want it delay or instant, come up, and then now it's gonna see. So this is your seconds time right there. Let's say zero, press review. And then let's go 1.5 seconds and then one second, right? Obviously you can go as two digit seconds right there. Once it's set, green, instant one and a half seconds. It's gonna go first beep, and then the second beep. So you can measure yourself. This is a lot of time for me to do the drill. So super simple, beeps, part time, and has a, a capability to do delay. And then on top of that, after you get all the data here, you could also recall your times, right? So you can scroll through, you can get your split times, which is the time in between each shot, right? Uh, for a reload, you can measure your reload between the last shot you took, the reload you did, and then the second shot after the reload. You can e see that here. You can see how much time it took you from the beep to the first shot, and it will also tell you how much time happened between the first shot all the way to the last shot. Jacob, how much time? Right, so super simple, absolutely good data gathering in this one. I actually ran this for years. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a quote unquote silencer right here. Uh, so you can use this for dry fire indoors and it's not too loud, you, you don't get a divorce. And this is not unique to this shot timer, right? This is actually pretty standard. You get your beep, you get your part time, you get your delay and the ability to recall how many shots you took, what's the time in between each shot, and the split time. So this is probably what most people will need. And to be honest with you, can't go wrong with this type of shot timer. So for the next shot timer, I have here Shooter's Global Go Timer. To start, it does everything this pack club does, right? It has your beep, it has your delay, it has your part time, and it has the ability to replay all the shots that you took. But a couple of things that is unique to this one is that the capability to set up different presets into your training. You can have a dry fire mode, you can have a live fire mode, you can have a pistol, nine millimeter, all these things. For example, there's a setting here 
where you can set it from zero to 100% the sensitivity. Based on how loud the rifle you're shooting, the ambient noise that you're at, you may only want to set it up to a 50% sensitivity so that it ignores everything else in that indoor range except for that shot that's coming in in your bay. That can be done here. It has an echo filter in it, has a beeper volume, right? How loud the beep is. It has a spy mode, which a spy mode means, let's say there's five instructors and a line of 20 students. Lead instructor beeps, the spy mode actually captures that beep and then automatically beeps with it, right? So no, some students are not gonna be able to say, oh, I didn't hear a beep. I can't hear you, Ray. Um, it has the capability to do delay all the way up to about five seconds. It tells you how many sets you need to do, right? So you do 1.5 second draws, uh, one second delay in between each set for you to reholster, and then you can tell it how many times you get to do that. Um, it has a shot limit capability, so you can be like, hey, only shoot five rounds in this drill, right? And ignore everything else. Got it. And then it also has the ability to do time limit. But absolutely powerful tool for data gathering as you progress in your training. So I get this complaint all the time from clients. Brendan, I don't want to spend 100 to $150 in a shot timer. I'd rather use that for ammunition. Cool. I get it. I'm there with you, okay? But think about this, right? If you ask any athlete out there, right, in the shooting space, they will tell you dry fire is key. And here's how shot timers can make your dry fire sessions a little better, right? So I'm gonna set up right here, um, respectable build drill, two seconds, right, on this uh, timer. So this is what I'm utilizing right now. I'm utilizing a delay function where once I press the green button, it's gonna have a quick delay. It's gonna do two seconds. And then after the second, uh, two seconds later, it's gonna have to have another beef. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do build drill, six rounds at a target about close to seven yards away from here, right? So I'm using my Mantis black beard right here. And here's how we're gonna do this. So we're gonna start from low ready real quick, right? So set the timer up, it's on delay. Right, so obviously I'm within the two seconds on that build drill, right? So that's one way to do it. Another way we could do this is if I set up about a second and a half delay, uh, you can practice yourself a good holster drill. So obviously clear my pistol right here, right? All right, so I'm gonna awkwardly stand here for about three seconds. There we go. Do a holster draw, about a second and a half, right? So great shot timer, but here's the problem. You're still the one dictating how fast you are, right? You're not necessarily getting uh, the accurate time when your shot broke. And here's what I mean by that. If I set a two second part time beep, two seconds later beep, and if I drew in between that, there would be no way for me to know how much I'm actually drawing, right? So a beep usually is about 0.2 to 0.25 seconds long. And so here comes the problem. If I'm practicing for a one second draw and I put a part time of one second here, right? And I draw, there is a little bit of problem there where in real life, added the pressure of real rounds and then taking away the last beep, I might be drawing at 1.1, 1.25. So what most people do to solve for that problem though, is they put the shot timer at 0.9 so, and then attempt to get the draw on dry fire with the gun at 0.9. So that in real life, they may be able to get one second. Now let's move on to the SG Go, right? So this one has the capability to have your sensitivity all the way to 100% to, to 0%, obviously. So regular outdoor ranges, I usually have the sensitivity at about 75% and it can read anything, right? Indoors, depending on what I'm doing, right? So let's say I'm using a pistol. Indoors, I usually do about a 0.9, or I'm sorry, 90%. So let's do an example here real quick, okay? So I'm currently at 0.9 sensitivity or 90%. And then I have a delay of about, let's do one second, so I'm not awkwardly standing here in front of you guys. And then set time limit of about 1.5 seconds. So let's see where Brendan is drawing, right? So I just had a weird attempt, right? And user error as usual. Make sure you don't put the sensor down, you know, towards the table so that you can hear the shot coming up. Anyway, here we go. Ready. 
there we go. Okay, so that didn't register a shock. Um, I'm sure you guys can see it here. This is screen recorded too, but it registered at 1.02. That's all it is, right? The point of that is to be as accurate as you can in gathering your data. That's the kind of concrete data point I'm looking for. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up again, same thing, dry fire. There's an option here for a rifle or for a black beard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry fire with a Mantis Blackbeard, right? Uh, the most annoying thing when it comes to dry firing with your rifle is having to reset all that stuff. We have a video on the Mantis Blackbeard, but this would be a good test. Can the SG go pick up the Blackbeard? We will see. Ready. It cannot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know that didn't work out, Holmes. And I have the SG Go set at about 100% sensitivity. Um, obviously the Blackbeard is not as loud, but we'll see if it can perceive that, okay? Ready. Perfect, yeah. So, not too bad. Uh, we're coming in at 1.3 after six shots. So, it does read it there. Another thing about the SG Go, it has the capability to record from your phone and actually pull up the data as you're doing the splits and as you're doing the shots, right? So I could be doing bang, 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 and you can actually see how we you know what second the shots went off. Really good way for you to self-diagnose, especially with a video like that, right? Because one thing that a lot of people do is they videotape their run on a USPSA or IDPA match, and they kind of backtrack, right, and see what the splits are. This mode right here allows you to literally just take the video as soon as the, as long as the SG Go is recording the shots, it will put it up on the video, the seconds and the split time on the shots that you're taking. Absolutely great tool for beginners and also experts. Top of the line, spared no expense. At the end of the day, can you get better at shooting without a shot timer? I would argue no. Honestly, no, because there's no way for you to break that plateau of your performance and get better, whether it be reloads, whether it be your holster draws, all that stuff. Now, can you get away with a basic shot timer or do you need to buy an advanced one? To be honest with you, I would buy the advanced one because guess what? As you get into the training, you're gonna outgrow this basic shot timer in probably a year, right? For most of you that are dedicated to shooting and watching this video, probably in a few months. So if you can do it, buy the advanced one, it's feature packed and you're able to future proof a lot of the stuff that you're gonna be doing with this. If you think all gun laws are an infringement and you live behind the enemy lines in the People's Republic of California, then check out our Unconvicted Felons uh, t-shirt. Uh, came out with this t-shirt design for you where uh, most of us are fed up with the, uh, the situation here in, the, in California. So check it out, check out our website, awesome t-shirt coming at you, and our new line of two arms uh, where it stands for two A rights matter. So check out our new t-shirt and help us feed our dog.